Hey guys, so today I'm doing a QA. and a I asked some questions over on my Instagram. If you don't follow me there, make sure you head over there and do that. Um, I asked it in my story as well as I posted a post and asked for people to do questions in the comments there. So I have a couple questions here. Uh, we can go ahead and get started on these. So question number one, any tips on spinning kicks? I'm a blue belt in Taekwondo and I'm struggling with the balance and turn motion for this kick. So with any kick that you're struggling with, it all just comes down to consistent practice, okay? Uh, but with specifically with a spinning kick, first of all, make sure that you're spinning on the ball of your foot, not the heel. That's a common mistake. So you have a lot more control over your spin if you are on the ball of your foot because you can grip with your toes when you're done with your spin on your heel. Um, there's a lot less control there, but it, it is, it depends on how your instructor teaches you and how you feel comfortable. I know some people um, that do spin on their heel and that's how they were taught. And I'm not trying to say that's wrong. It's just my opinion. It's better to spin on the ball of your foot. Um, also, when you do that spin, make sure that your whole, it's a process to spin. So your shoulders go, like your hands need to come around, your shoulders need to go, you need to turn, spot your target, turn your hips, and then do your kick, no matter what that um, spin kick is that you're talking about. So it's not just like spin your whole body at one time, okay? It has to go in a certain motion. And I know there's a lot of good YouTube tutorials on that as well. So um, just look up tutorials on spin kicks and then just for any kick, practice, practice, practice. Let me get back to these questions. Question number two. What is it like being able to renovate an existing studio to fit your personal vision? So it's been, the renovation process has been a lot of fun and we've gotten a lot of good feedback with that because we've been posting it on the school's page and obviously on my YouTube and my Instagram and stuff like that. So it's been a ton of fun. We didn't think we were gonna be able to like get it all done in one go. Um, that's the difficulty normally in buying a already running school rather than opening one up from scratch, which we were okay with doing either. Like this opportunity came up. We didn't think that this was coming anytime soon. So we're just taking it and running with it. But yeah, we always kind of thought, we knew this was gonna be, this might be an opportunity at some point, but if it wasn't, we were fine with it. We were gonna just open a school from the ground up. We both had this vision of what we want a school to look like, and Iron Dragon didn't look that way. It still doesn't look that way, we're not done. Um, but it definitely didn't look the way that we wanted it to look. So we're getting there slowly, which I mean, there's gonna be a lot of pushback whenever you go into a business and start changing stuff. Luckily, there's not like a huge student base there. So if we were to lose them, which we of course wanna keep them, but if we were to lose them, I mean, some people don't like change and some people aren't gonna like what, what we're doing and that's okay. Like they need to be at a school that they like and that they like the way it's being run. Um, but if we lose them, we can gain that back pretty easily and we were already thinking that we were going to be starting at you know ground zero with no students and whatever so but the actual renovation process has been a lot of fun um the painting and everything like that it's been exhausting but fun and great to just see how like a coat of paint can just make somewhere come alive because it has looked that way i've been training at iron dragon since 2005 and i promise you nothing has changed like it has looked the exact same since I started training there 15 years ago. So it was definitely due for some remodel. And again, like we're not done. We've got so much left to do and we're so excited about it. Um, and then I got a will you marry me question. I actually got a couple similar questions to that. So I just wanna clarify, I actually did get married last year so I'm gonna go with no on that one. Louise probably wouldn't be too happy about that. Um, and then the next question, what tournaments do you attend? Have you ever been to the Ozark Mountain Nationals? I've heard of the Ozark Mountain Nationals, uh, just kind of in passing. I honestly don't even know what circuit that's on or where it is. 
So no, I've never been to that particular tournament. Um, I've kind of been all over the place with tournaments. I did two years of WKC, 2014 and 2015. So what WKC is, if you guys don't know, it's the World Karate and Kickboxing Commission. I don't remember what the C stands for. Anyways, so you do a regional tournament. There's one uh, an hour away from me and they're all over the place. And top, I want to say three, it's been a while, top three or four in each division um, get to go to nationals. And then nationals is always in Detroit. And then the top four out of every division in Detroit gets to go to Worlds. And Worlds changes every year. So in 2014, we went to Ireland and I um, won gold in Korean forms. And then 2015, it was in Orlando. And that was the first year that it was in the US. So the US team was pretty big. It was a ton of fun. I actually enjoyed Orlando more than Ireland. I mean, Ireland was really cool to go to, but just like the feeling in Orlando was really cool. And I won bronze in Korean forms that year. And then I went on in 2016, I did a full year of NBL, the National Black Belt League. And um, to be honest, I just like, I wasn't a fan. I had heard from some people on the WKC um, circuit that because I had mentioned oh yeah I kind of want to do NBL and people were like don't do it don't do it so um, I was like no I want to do it like what it seems really cool it it wasn't so I didn't really enjoy it the tournaments weren't ran very well um, and it was just I don't want to get into like the politics of sport martial arts but um, yeah I just don't recommend so then I've also done some just kind of random tournaments here and there. Our local circuit in Georgia is um, IKC and I've done a lot of those tournaments randomly. I'm trying to get my students into those tournaments because I think uh, local circuit is the best way to go. I try to do Battle of Atlanta as much as possible because it's a ton of fun. And um, I've done the US Open in Disney World, one of my favorite tournaments, but terribly run like I was supposed to compete at like 10 a.m. and I competed at 4 p.m. so like terrible term don't expect to do anything else that day but um, yeah I want to try Promac because ever since they have I don't know partnered or taken over or whatever um, with Battle of Atlanta it has run so smooth and I'm so impressed with it so um, and from what I've heard of Promac, they're actually running smoothly. And anybody who competes in martial arts knows that that's insane to actually compete on time and get out in time to like go eat lunch and stuff like that. Like it's unheard of. And that's why I kind of stopped competing, you know, to begin with. It's like, it's just, ex it's exhausting to sit around, warm up and then like, oh wait, no, you know, you don't have enough judges, blah, blah, blah. I mean, one of the tournaments in the NBL, which is another reason I don't really do this. We got down to the end of the day and the adult black belt still hadn't gone and the nighttime show was going on. That's how late this was. So the nighttime finals were going on. We still hadn't competed in our divisions. So all of the judges had just like left, like forgotten about us, just left. And we looked at the men's division. We were like, we will sit down and judge you if you guys judge us. So us as competitors who paid to be there had to sit there and judge the other division because all of the judges were gone to the nighttime finals. So it's just like, they're so poorly run. So that's why like Pro Max seems really cool. Um, if I get back into competing, I really want to try it. Sorry, that was a big rant. Um, yeah. All right, next question. Favorite type of kick? So, that's a really hard question, actually. It depends on what I'm doing the kick for. So if I'm sparring, I tend to lean towards like round kicks. They're a lot faster. Um, if I'm doing a kick for it to look good, a uh, side kick, as you can probably see on my Instagram feed, most of my kicks are side kicks. Um, if I'm doing kicks for fun, I like tornado kicks, spinning hook kicks, 
um, spinning back kicks, stuff like that. Those are fun. But really, I'm kind of all over the place. I don't have one specific favorite kick. Next question. How many hours do you work out? So I'm going to assume that means how many hours do I work out um, like per day or per session. If I'm doing like a wave master kicking session, like an hour tops, maybe 45 minutes. Depends on how hard I'm going. If I'm sitting there like doing basic kicks, I can do that for an hour and a half. But if I'm going all out, like I'll probably last about 45 minutes. Um, if I'm in the gym, like lifting weights, I can go to like an hour and a half just because I really love that environment and it doesn't like wear you out as fast. So really like 45 minutes to an hour and a half a day. Next question. Do you prefer coaching slash participating in competitions or training with self-motivation? That's a good question. Um, that has changed over time. So. When I first started training on my own, it was completely to compete. That's the only thing that motivated me. And that was for maybe six or seven years. My complete motivation was competition. And there's nothing wrong with that. You need to find what motivates you. And that's what was motivating me at the time. I got, like I said, in a different, like, a couple questions ago. I got really burnt out with competition is how they were run. So then I had to motivate myself for different reasons, which was really hard to do. So that's why I've kind of dabbled in competition in the last couple of years because I'll find myself being unmotivated because I don't feel like I'm training for anything. And I have to feel like I'm training for something. And that's why, I mean, I had a goal when I was going up the ranks because you were testing every however many months. Well, now I'm gonna test in like five years if I even choose to test again. So there's not really any motivation there. And then when I'm not competing actively, I don't have motivation to do that. So I really have to like find motivation somewhere else. A lot of the times I just train for fun and train, um, honestly train for a YouTube video or train whatever, but Recently, I at the end of last year, I wasn't super motivated, so I was like, oh, I'll do competition again, like that'll motivate me again, and it didn't. Like it was, it was like a chore to have to go train for competition again. So I think I still need some more time off of that before I want to do it again. If I if I do at all want to get back into it again, but so right now I'm training for the self with self motivation. But also that's why I started karate because I know that the ranks motivate me and I wanted to go up the ranks in another uh, martial art. So that's why I'm doing karate right now. All right, next question. Hi, Jalen, I'm an older martial artist and I was wondering what your thoughts or recommendations on training past 50. Um, so I definitely want to continue training past 50 as well. Um, I really think what it comes down to is working on your mobility, flexibility, recovery, and stuff like that. And this, I have no scientific backing on this, I have not researched it, but in my opinion, if you notice, there's more like 40 year olds getting to the Olympics nowadays. And I think it's because people are focusing more on like going to get sports massages and recovering after they train and stuff like that. Whereas people used to just like train, train, train and break down their bodies and then they were crippled by the time they were 30. So I really think that's a big deal. So I think you should go try to get like sports massages and whatnot whenever you can. And um, I know that probably would come out to be pretty expensive if you do it regularly, but foam rolling also, you can get a foam roller for like five or 10 bucks. So foam roll, um, stuff like that. But also, as cliche as it sounds, especially coming from a 27 year old, I think age is just a number. Um, really, I train with people in their 60s, 70s, who I had no idea they were in their 60s or 70s until it just like came up in conversation. And it floored me because they were keeping up with the younger people in class and they were constantly training. But it's because like, I don't think they care. Like they're not sitting here being like, oh, I'm 
60 something years old, I should be slowing down or I'm 60 something years old. Like they're not using it as an excuse is what I'm saying. And I don't want to come off like condescending because I, I don't know, like you could have had some injuries in your younger life or, and I know like bodies start breaking down as they get older, but just do what you can and try to not use age as an excuse because it's ne you're never too old to train martial arts. And say you have had injuries in the past, maybe don't do a like really hard martial art. Maybe go more towards like Tai Chi or something like that. I mean, that's always kind of been my plan is like get the hard martial arts out when I'm younger and then um, go to like Tai Chi when I'm older. But I don't know. Uh, that's a difficult one since I'm not over 50, but that would be my advice. Next question. How do I get better balance? So there's a couple of different drills that I can think of to get better balance. There's one that I do with my little dragons where you hold your leg up in like a front kick chamber type thing and you pivot 90 degrees back and forth trying to hold your leg up. And then you can try, if, you, if that's easy for you on both legs, you can try to pivot 180 degrees and back around without putting it down. So that would help you a lot on like the balance part with kicking because when you kick, unless you're just doing a front kick, you don't just like pull your leg up and kick. You've got to have that balance and pivot your foot at the same time, which that's where most people lose their balance when they're kicking. Like they can just hold their leg up just fine, but when they pivot it to kick, they like get all wonky and lose their balance. So maybe even just try that picking your foot up and then pivoting, kicking out slow, putting it back and down. Same with the um, kicking question at the beginning. It's all just practice. And you can practice balance like throughout your daily life. If you are cooking, washing the dishes, you know, whatever. I mean, I would say at work, but you might look a little weird. Just like stand on one leg and hold it for a little while and do something else. And then stand on the other leg and hold it for a little while. Just stuff like that. Um, is going to help your balance in the long run. So this last question has uh, multiple questions in it. So the first one is, how do you motivate yourself to stay passionate for martial arts? Um, so there's a lot of different ways to motivate yourself. Me, I watch some YouTube videos. Some of my favorite YouTubers, um, Alex Wong, Donovan Barrett, uh, Shane Faison with fight tips. So I watch their videos and if I watch like Alex posts a lot of her training sessions, I'll watch that and I'll be like, I want to go train, you know? So stuff like that. Um, but motivation doesn't always last. Like you can be super motivated one day and then you don't want to do anything the next. So what it really comes down to is discipline. Um, nobody is always going to be motivated, but you have to stay disciplined. So if you told yourself that you're going to train Monday through Friday, it doesn't matter how you feel, you need to go train Monday through Friday. Even if just a 30 minute kicking session because you're just not feeling it that day, like just get yourself there and train. And then you're gonna build that, um, that discipline to be able to make yourself go. Like there's been multiple times that it's taken me an hour from the time I was like, yeah, I'm going to go train to the point that I actually made myself change into my uniform and go train because I didn't want to. Okay. So I'm not always motivated. I just try to keep that discipline. And another way to keep your discipline is, um, is to create yourself a schedule. Like I said, so, you need to just say like, and make it really specific. I'm gonna go kick the wave master for 45 minutes on Monday. And then I'm gonna go to the gym and do an upper body workout on Tuesday. And then I'm gonna, whatever. So make yourself a detailed plan and then stick to it. And um, then you'll build up enough discipline to look like you're always motivated. Do you recommend teaching full splits for your students? <laughs> so. I can't do a full split. I'm nowhere near a full split. Flexibility is not my strong suit. Um, I, I try to incorporate more stretching. I definitely need to incorporate more. But with my students, what I do 
It depends on their age. So with the, my little dragon class, I have like this set warm up stretching routine that they do at the beginning. And it's really for nothing other than them to memorize a routine, okay? So a five-year-old really doesn't need to warm up before they go kick, like they're a rubber band anyways, they're fine. But I try to get them to memorize this one specific routine and then they start to lead it. So it's really to get them like leadership skills and this and that, but it's also instilling in them like, oh, this stretch and this stretch and this stretch. But with my older students, I try to do like a warm up at the beginning of class. So like high knees, jogging, leg raises, you know, butt kicks, whatever, like that type of a warm up. And then I try to spend at least five minutes at the end of class stretching. And I try to explain to them that like, you stretch for flexibility when you're warm at the beginning of class, you're warming up, but you know, you're, it's better off to stretch at the end of class and stretching is really important. Flexibility is really important. And just mobility of being able to kick when you need to and, and place your kick where you want to and stuff like that. But no, I'm not super flexible. So full splits isn't something that I like require of my students or even like encourage. Like if, if they can do it, great. And I'm like, oh wow, great stretch. You know, keep that up, blah, blah, blah. But I don't try to necessarily get them to a full split. Do you prefer point fighting or continuous? So I prefer continuous because I'm not super fast. So I've done points, point sparring for a season of martial arts because uh, when it comes to sport karate, which is what I competed in, since I'm not world taekwondo and that's you know more of a continuous like taekwondo style. And then yes, I do ITF forms, but not the way that the ITF does it. Um, so I really didn't fit in anywhere when I wanted to compete. So that's why I went to sport karate because it's more of an open competition. Now I tried continuous sparring, which that's like way back in my YouTube videos if you guys want to go find that. And I really enjoyed it. And I was like, oh, I want to get more into this. But then the next couple of tournaments that I um, signed up for, nobody was in my division. And I realized that continuous fighting was not a big thing in sport karate. Like it's all about point fighting. So if I wanted to fight, I had to do point sparring. So I was like, okay, whatever, it can't be that hard. So I tried it and lost every single match. Like I just, I'm so bad at like getting that first point. And then because none of my instructors trained it and nobody that I knew trained point fighting, pretty much the only time I was able to get any matches in was in a competition. So like the competition was my practice because I didn't have anybody to practice with. So it just didn't work out well at all. Whereas like the type of sparring that I grew up doing was more of a continuous. So I feel like I could do better in that. Um, I just don't really have a place to do it. So, all right, last question. Is your family a Taekwondo family? Uh, no, they are not. So my brother did martial arts with me for probably three years when I first started it, but just because my mom forced him to, so he didn't enjoy it at all. Neither one of my parents um, knew anything about martial arts. They, they like don't even, they're not gym people, they're not workout people. Like they have no idea how I enjoy this. They always thought I was crazy, but they, they were super supportive of it. So once I started really getting into fitness and getting into um, martial arts, they let me convert part of the basement into a home gym, which is where I train. I'm sure you guys have seen it. And then they gave me like half of the area that I have now and I made it into a home gym. And then probably in like high school, they let me take over the other half of that area and mat it and like get my wave master and everything and turn it into like a Taekwondo area. And then when I moved out, they let me keep it there because I don't have room for that stuff in my house now. Um, and they only live about 20 minutes away. So I was able to keep it there and continue to go over there and train. They've been super supportive of um, Iron Dragon. They were there helping me paint and renovate and everything like that. Um, so, but no, like 
my family doesn't enjoy exercise and they don't enjoy um, martial arts and none of them ever like wanted to do martial arts with me or anything like that. I've gotten them to like hold a target here and there maybe like three times in my life, which is why I needed a wave master. But um, yeah, I mean, they let me convert my their basement into a Taekwondo school, so I can't complain, but I'm the only one who did martial arts in my family. All right, so that was a pretty long video. I'm sorry if I rambled some during those answers, but I hope I got them answered for you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.